It's going down. The new music show online, a.k.a. The Weekend Mixtape. Julie Pilot's back with us. Yes. I'm DJ Ski. It's been a minute since it's been I the know. both of us. It's crazy. It's a good thing we got a full team to cover. Everybody's you were back. I was in a, Florida? Yeah, for the presidential debate. So I was actually hosting the Rock the Vote and uh, Xbox event that was live on all of Microsoft and Xbox Live. So shout out to everybody that tuned in with the Neon Trees. So it was a great show. That's crazy. It was fun. It was crazy out there. Beautiful in Boca Raton. And uh, we were right across the street from where it was all going down. So just a great environment and great to get out the uh, youth and getting them voting. So. There's Smart. been so much going on since we hung out last. I mean, not one but two Kiss Jingle Balls sold out. Yeah. How does that, how do we even have two? And it's not even like, the crazy thing is too, it's not like Saturday. It's like two days apart, which yeah. is great. And we're sold out both instantly. December's going to kick off with a complete bang. That's going down. Yeah. And um, uh, this Saturday, this Saturday, we're going to go thrift shopping with Mac Lamar. That's right. I'm so excited about it's that. Be fun. Uh, if you want to come with us, all the details are up on. I Kiss think I might be there. I'm gonna come with. Good. He's got a dope album. By the way, twenty dollars in your pocket. What do you think you will find at a thrift store? Now, do you ever go thrift store shopping? I it do. seems like you're like, no, I have the Nikes that don't even come out yet. That's and where you, know? you find the stuff. You find like the old school ones. You know, I love like all finding all the weird like accessories and other random stuff. I love like digging through and like my favorite thing is like the Dodger Market, Dodger Stadium flea markets and the Rose Bowl ones. So. I love all that. We'll see how the thrift stores go, though. So. Okay, so that'll be good. Uh, what new music are you liking? So much out there. Speaking of thrift stores, so Mac Lamore and, uh, just dropped his project. It's incredible. Shout out to Seattle. And he sold, I think, 75,000 copies first week. Yeah, the first week, and then he was in the top 15 again this week. Incredible. So we're really excited about that. Which is great them. to do it back-to-back. -back. And speaking of new artists selling uh, units, Kendrick Lamar, straight out of L.A. and Compton, to be exact, is going to sell over 200,000 copies first week. Yeah, there's Good a lot. Good kid, Mad City. Which there's is a lot going on taking with over, music. Yeah, it's taken over, like, Twitter. It's been trending for, like, three days straight. He actually went to the, uh, after the Lakers game outside the Staples Center and sat on a bus and just tweeted he was going to do a concert and caused, like, a riot. So it was great. And it's great to see L.A. And people are saying it's, like, you know, today's version of Illmatic, which is one of the best hip-hop albums ever. So shout yeah. to Kendrick. He came through when we were doing the Coachella broadcast yeah, this year, great. and, I mean, he just was... I love, like, he talked about um, being from Compton, but he didn't want to have the same storyline as yeah. Easy e He wanted to be something different from Compton. Totally, and it's crazy. I've known him since he was 16, so to watch him grow from that, from just being, like... When I met him then, he was just, like, the best freestyler ever. Like, he could go in a room and freestyle, but didn't have any songs, couldn't make records, and now to put together what people are saying is, like, one of the greatest hip-hop records ever is incredible so shout to kendrick it's that's so awesome yeah. yeah every single week when we do this we talk about all the music for the weekend and then uh we always have a live performance chris yes. richardson's coming up it's gonna be fun i remember the first time i ever heard his voice mm. on the tiger record yeah, far away i just right. stopped like wait who is that exactly so um we've got a lot of people watching the live stream for chris he'll be up in just a minute he i signed picked... to ymcmb too it's tiger's label yeah so we'll talk about um, all that stuff but what's your pick uh, Jessie Ware, 110%. Okay. We put it on the blog. Um, she's another artist from the UK, and she's got a really different sound. Like, there's a little bit of Sade in her voice, and wow. she's going to come uh, to the US in the beginning of the year. So Nice. Really we got to get her up here her. then. Yeah, we will. Working on it. Already, already working on it. Taylor Swift just dropped her album, too, that's going to be massive. This yeah, they're saying 1.1 million records. They said with, like, endorsements and stuff, they spent, like, $15 million on the media campaign. Because she has, like, she's in Wal... You can go into Walgreens and buy her album and stuff. Just they put all these new distribution points up and stuff. It's incredible, so... So, you know, when we're hanging out for Weekend yeah. Mixtape, we not only talk about the new music, we talk a lot about how the industry is changing. Oh, yes. Most of the artists that we have in are brand new artists that uh, a lot of them are doing things independently, a lot, lot different than it's ever been done before. And I bring this up all the time. One of my favorite things anybody's ever said in here is Tricky Stewart. And he said, now in music, more than ever, it's not as much how hard you work or how talented you are. A lot of times it's the people you have around you. Yes. So true. Like, you've, you, we've seen some of the most talented artists, but the teams weren't quite there. And it's tough to get off. And you don't really want to – it makes it easier to work with. You don't want to work with people that don't have good teams. And, you know, on the contrary, you've seen people with just great teams that you always want to support. So. Yeah. So uh, we've got something special today before Chris comes up. Uh, we've got an entertainment lawyer, uh, Dina Lapol, and she's going to talk yes. a little bit about how you find uh, the right representative. And also, uh, if you're interested in learning about the music yep. business, her class coming up uh, at UCLA. So come on up, yeah, Dina. Come on, Dina. 
So, first of all, if you're an artist, let's say, you know, you recorded your album, let's say you have been blowing up at shows and major record labels are calling you left and right, um, and you know you need a lawyer, like, what? what's step one? Well, you know you need a lawyer when someone is asking you where to send the contract. So that's yeah. the first thing, okay? You just can't sign anything. That's when you definitely need a lawyer. So the good news is if people are asking you who your lawyer is, then you know that that's, you're in a really good position. Yeah. And there's four people on the artist team. The personal manager, which is like the CEO of the artist enterprise. They're in charge. You have the entertainment lawyer who does all the contracts and the negotiations. You have the business manager, which is just a fancy word for an accountant in the music industry, because mm -hmm. the music industry is very complicated. And then you have the agent, and the agent really solicits uh, performances, live shows, things of that nature. And I mean, I think it's really cool. So many people um, love music, and they live for music, and they want to get into the business, but have no idea how, aside from seeing, you know, being an artist and your class coming up at UCLA isn't just about law, it's really about everything, right? Yeah, it's called uh, Legal and Practical Aspects of the Music Business. It's 12 weeks, it starts January 8th, Tuesday nights on the UCLA campus and goes through the end of March. We go through every single agreement in the music business. So touring agreements, record deals, producer deals, management deals, merchandising deals, deals relating to film and TV, issues that come up in the recording studio, copyright, who owns the song, who is entitled to own the song, if you write the song or think you write the song, all these issues come up. We cover all these issues. You know, it's really important that people understand that there's a whole different side of the music industry called the music business. There's, you know, the creative side that we all love being, you know, playing music, listening to music, but then there's the business part, and that is a very treacherous area unless you know what you're dealing with. Um, so that's what the class covers. It goes through all these issues so people are aware of how to handle this and, and what they should be expecting. So not like they memorize the terms of a ac recording agreement, but we go through it over a 12-week period so they understand the issues. And more importantly for artists, they understand which rights that they need to hold on to and how they can protect all the rights and how we use their rights to help monetize their brand. It's all about building your artist brand as a business. Yeah. Absolutely. What advice would you give to new artists out there that, you know, if a label's calling and asking them for their lawyer's information and they don't have a lawyer, they don't know anybody, how do you find and choose the, the right person? That's a great question. This is what I tell everybody. Go get your favorite CD of your favorite artists, take three of your favorite artists, open the CD, and see who their lawyers are. Okay, because this is what we do in the music business. We emulate each other. I have people that I emulate. I have lawyers that I look up to that I want to be like. You know, so artists that have artists that they look up to and that inspire them, you know, see if their team is accepting people. Another way to find out some good lawyers is ask people like Julie Pilot or people at KISS FM, DJ Ski, anybody at 98.7 that are actually in the music business. And what they'll do is they'll give you some referrals. But the best way to do it is, you know, look in the CD and see who your, 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 uh, your mentors have. I've never heard that yet. It makes so much sense. Yeah, totally. And I mean, Ski, have you ever known anybody that had a tremendous amount of talent and signed a bad deal and you never heard from them again? Yes, that was actually going to be what I asked you. What happens to, you know, what advice do you have? So say if there's artists out there that have signed to a production company and didn't get it checked by a lawyer and are, are under, under these bad deals, what advice do you have? I mean, that's horrible. I mean, I know, I know artists that got their career put on hold for like five years because they were stuck in these horrible there's deals. There's big artists, even yeah. if you look at like outcasts and people yeah. like that that are still in legal, you know, that are not putting out music because of things like that, so. I mean, it's difficult. Listen, signing something that you're not educated on what you're signing is a problem. I mean, we have a law in California that says if you're not represented by counsel and you sign something, uh, you know, there's some case law where you can get out of it, but it's very expensive. So, for example, if you hire, say, someone like me right up front or another entertainment lawyer, they might be able to be involved on like a percentage basis, 5% of your income, which means that you're not putting up any money. 
and you know we sh we take the risk with you. But if you sign something that's really bad and you have to later come back to a lawyer, you're looking at spending ten to fifteen thousand dollars just to get the lawyer to help you get out of the contract, and that's relatively inexpensive. And I've then seen if it, it goes get to up court, to yeah. oh yeah, and the more successful you are, the more expensive it is. I mean, I've seen an artist spend two hundred thousand dollars getting out of a really bad deal when he signed it without a lawyer. And it actually, he's a, he was actually able to get out of the contract, but it cost him a couple hundred thousand dollars, which was subsidized by his new label trying to help him get out of the old deal that was really bad. So he was climbing uphill with a boulder on his back. I mean, wh whether you want to be a lawyer or not, I would totally recommend <laughs> yeah. going to some of his classes. Class. <laughs> no, you would love it because no. I've gone to her classes before. And whether it's publishing or digital There's or so just the way the business is changing with rights, you're so much stronger at what you do every single day if you're educated on it's, it. It's great knowledge. Even if you like, like you said, even if you're not going to be a lawyer, it's just you, you know, like you know, even with taxes and stuff, with anything that you do, you should know at least a little bit about it. You can't just trust somebody else. So the more knowledge that you have, the better it's going to be for yourself. Yeah, knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you can help yourself. Okay, Absolutely. so Dina Lepole, her class is coming yes. to UCLA starting in January? Yeah, January 8th to March 24th. You can start registering at uclaextension.edu after November 5th. Even easier than that, we put the flyer and all the info on the Weekend Mixtape yes. blog. So thanks Perfect. for stopping by. Yes, yeah, thank hit you. Hit me on Twitter, at Dina Lepole. There we oh, go. Oh yeah, Twitter. <laughs> Tweeter. Tweeter the lawyer. Okay, Here cool. Thanks, Dina. All right. Ladies All right, you guys, make some noise for Chris Richardson. Yes. All right, come on up. Hey, thanks so much. Oh, is this me right in the middle? There you go. What's good, man? How are you? How you doing? Got the middle seat. I know. Got the middle seat. Right in the middle. So we were just talking about, we first heard you on this uh, Tyga record. Yes. Far away. I remember. Remember, we got it, and it said it was uh, Chris Martin. That's how it was originally really? serviced. And we were sometimes like, sometimes they what? do that because they don't want things to leak. Yeah. And so they'll put, you know, you'll have like the new Dr. Dre song, but it'll say ABBA on the yeah. CD because they don't want it to get bootlegged. <laughs> you know. So. Well, I mean, I'll yeah. take that. Yeah, exactly. But Chris Martin's cool. Yeah, exactly. Not bad. Not yeah, bad not comparison bad and stuff, not right? Not bad at all. So what's going on, man? Man, just uh, hanging out with you guys and ladies, of course. Yeah, there but, we uh, go. Yeah, I'm uh, loving LA. I, mean, I, lo I love the West Coast. I'm from the East Coast, so okay. um, I'm from Virginia Beach, so um, the weather there is sort of similar to here, which is really cool. Yeah. I, I want to hear about your whole story, and I know there's people here that have questions, and also the live stream. Uh, people are going to want to ask you some questions before you actually perform. Okay. Um, but first, you know, you said Virginia Beach. When you were growing up, there's actually such a music scene from there. You know, uh, what was that like? Um, well, it's... Uh, and, a, and for people that don't know about the music scene, who are some of the legends that yeah. came from that? Legends. Um, man, you have Teddy Riley, you have Timberland, you have Pharrell and the Neptunes, you have Jason Mraz, you have Trey Song. Do they still have a lot of presence in the Chris city, Brown. or do they like make it and leave? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a couple of them still have homes in Virginia Beach, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think Chris has one, Chris Brown has one up in Tappahannock, Virginia, I believe. Um, but uh, most of them, I think, have left. I think they're they have houses somewhere else. Or, yeah. Well, I mean, they can buy multiple houses now. Yeah, I right. Guess, so they're they're in good shape. Is there something in the water over there, like with, with music? Like I have no <laughs> clue, man. It's with music. It's with sports. Um, I don't know. I think it's because it's such a military. Yeah. Maybe it's a military okay. from all different places in uh, the United States or the world, and maybe it's just a collective. You know, I guess a different mixture nice. of people that are there. Maybe that's what sort of helps it out. But uh, it's definitely one of those places that a lot of I guess nice. talent comes from musically. Absolutely. So from growing up in Virginia Beach to today, what was the journey like as a new artist? Oh, man. A new artist. Uh, well, I always uh, wanted to do music since I was a kid. I was dancing around when I was five, doing Michael Jackson and all that stuff, and uh, and uh, listening to music growing up with my, my father and my mom. But uh, I think it's when I came home from a college break one time. It's sort of whenever I, um, I guess, my mind went into this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And uh, I did a talent competition back in Virginia Beach for Teddy Riley. And uh, he was the host for it. Wow. And I became, I was the first runner up in this in this small local talent competition. Mm -hmm. But um, he ended up coming up to me and uh, he invited me to, he invited me to a studio. And I was, I mean, I was stoked. I was like, man, this is great. Yeah. I was like, I'm in a competition. I did not even know Teddy Riley was yeah. gonna be here. Yeah. And uh, so he invited me to the studio the next day and I literally um, recorded my first song like in a professional studio then and right then is when I sort of just realized that this is what I wanted to do wow. sort of with my uh, career you know I wanted 
this to be, you know, my journey or my story. So, uh, and then I ended up uh, getting over into, I think Teddy ended up moving to Cali. And then I, uh, I was still there. Oh, okay. So um, it didn't escalate too far, but it just gave me the hope. Yeah. You know, and then I ended up linking up with Timberland, and I was working <laughs> in with his camp for a little bit and uh, trying to solidify a deal, and uh, we came became good friends, and um, and then at, at that same time is when I got on Idol, yeah. so it was like that yeah. c- complete switch. So I mean, going back to the <laughs> whole growing up in Virginia Beach, I was yeah. I was a military brat, so I was I was born in Belgium, and then we moved to Colorado Springs, and then we moved to North Carolina, and then moved to Virginia Beach, which is where my family's originally from. Wow. So I didn't spend my whole life in Virginia Beach. Maybe it was like the, I mean, the past, of course, 15 years I've been there, but that's what I call home. Lots of movies. But that's where I realized where I wanted to do music, which is cool. Yeah. You, you know, know what I love about that story is it's interesting. I think a lot of new artists will be hesitant about, do I want to play this show? Oh, I don't know if it's the right look. Yeah. Do I right. want to enter this competition? I don't want to seem like, you know, I'm just trying too hard in a yeah. competition and try to get people to vote for me. But it seems like you took every <laughs> yeah. chance possible. Why not? And like everything worked out in your favor. Like, like it was opportunities for exposure, and here you're running into Teddy Riley and Timbaland. Yeah, I know. I think that's what it is. My my dad always said, "Put yourself at the right place at the yeah. right time," as opposed to just being at the right place. It's true. And uh, I was always just trying to put myself in the presence of people within the music business. And if I and I didn't know Teddy Riley was going to be there that one night, so that whole wow. that whole thing was just being at the right place at the right time. Because um, he made my my mental sort of switch into uh, this is what I want to do. That's you know, crazy. I sort of stopped playing college football. I stopped, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I still went to college. I went to a community college, but I still sort of pursued it. But uh, it definitely it definitely is crazy whenever um, you get you have someone that impacts your your life like that, you know, and, and that's what I sort of give to, I guess, Teddy Riley during crazy. that whole situation. But it's cool because it went back in within the water of Virginia Beach. Hey. Now it's YMCMB? Yes, cash money. So how did this whole deal come oh, apart? Um, well, I got off the show, and I didn't get a deal, and... Uh, so I just started searching and searching and searching for a deal. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I really wasn't pulling in anything, um, which it was a little bit surprising to me because what I was doing with Idol is, of course, for the experience, yeah. but I was trying to use it as a platform for my own career. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this is something I even spoke to about all the people that I, I mean, when I was working in the Virginia Beach music scene, this is what I was saying to them, too. I just think this would be a great outlet for me, you know. Um, so that's why I did it. And after the show was done, I didn't get a I didn't get a deal or or too many offers at all, and I ended up just really working. I came back over here to L.A., started working in the music scene here. I went to Nashville. I went back to Virginia Beach. I went to Miami. I was just going everywhere, staying involved in music, um, whether it was songwriting, producing, wow. and uh, I ended up throughout that whole journey. My, I just ended up back in Virginia Beach, and that's where I met my manager, who works for Cash Money. And I showed him some music, and we're the type of people that carry around our music everywhere we go. Smart and uh, I was like, uh, we always to, ready. We listened to some music in my truck, and uh, he loved it. And um, two weeks later, he just flew me down to Miami. I showed showed it to Slim and Birdman, and they loved it. And since that moment, it's just they've uh-huh. been really behind the project. It's so funny because so many people would think like they'd be lucky in life if the stars aligned and they got that one meeting with like the one dream person they had to work with. And it seems like you've had that three or four times. Yeah, I've had that. uh, (laughs) Yeah, I do. I feel like that. I feel like I've got a chance to um, get good leadership and I guess good direction from really, really, really um, impactful people within the music business. And uh, but not only that, I mean, I did a lot of stuff um, even post Idol on my own you know this was all me working to get to a certain point um and putting myself in certain situations and and it took me it's crazy that it took me as long as it did after the show just to wind back where i'm where i'm from yeah to find the person that's going to get me to the next step but i sort of just had that vision i was like i just got to get a good outlet and someone behind me and uh then they'll be able to push the music out there that's so awesome i know i saw some people making some noise i think we have questions on the live stream do we have some questions oh and from the audience Okay. Here we go. Okay. What's your name? Hi, I'm Paige. Hi, Paige. Hey, Paige. Nice to meet you guys. So I hear you have a really good Apollo Theater story. Oh my goodness I'd gracious! Love to hear from you. Who told you that? Just a rumor, Twitter. Oh man. Uh-oh. So not only uh, did I did uh, did I did, not only did I do Idol, I was on Showtime at the Apollo prior. Wow. Um. And I got booed off stage. Oh, wow. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what (laughs) happened. So I'll go into it really quick. (laughs) They did this Showtime at the Apollo on tour where they did a couple states up and down the East Coast where they would, uh, you know, they would do competitions. And the winner of that competition would go up to the real Showtime at the Apollo. And uh, I didn't win. 
I, I, I was an, another first runner up. I didn't win, but they called me, invited me up there to sing. And uh, I went up there, and uh, we took the seven-hour journey up there. And I remember waiting. I think they taped three shows in a day. And I, I was the third show that they were taping. I went up and I, I sang a song. And all the way sort of at the very end of the song, I could hear the crowd sort of not, I don't know, maybe not digging it. <laughs> but it really wasn't like it. It was crazy because it was almost done. But anyway, I'm not going to make any excuses. Dude came out with his cane. I just left the stage. And it was a great experience, though. It was funny because I wasn't mad. I wasn't upset. I just was sort of... Yeah. I was and like, you did this, it. Is a, this is a cool experience. I got yeah. a, I got a chance to be, I mean, on Showtime at the Apollo. That's awesome. But not only that, I, I just tried out for everything. Like that's, that's what I, that's what I did. Like competitions. It makes Showtime it so much Apollo. sweeter now. I know. And then of course, you know, American Idol. Yeah. But uh yeah, I haven't told too many people about getting booed off the stage. Hope hope that would get lost within the <laughs> YouTube videos somewhere. Okay, <laughs> we got another, we got another one uh from your fans on the live stream. Another question. Uh would you ever be able to do or would you want to do another reality show or? Oh, man. Um, well, I don't, what, I mean. I don't think you'd say no to anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it all You never know what will happen. Yeah, it all depends. I mean, I'm, I'm a very creative person. So, I mean, if I had some type of, you know, I guess creative control within it, you know, to, to I guess, make it interesting for myself, definitely. I mean, I'm open to anything. Um, that The Idol was sort of a reality show, you know, yeah. to me, but it probably wasn't like other reality shows are taped, you know. I mean, it pretty, mu it pretty much was like standard, do the same thing every week, and you go through a routine as opposed to you like being at different spots and, and different things, but I definitely would be open to it, to it for sure. As an artist, when you were on Idol, was it ever hard trying to figure out what was best for you versus what you thought the audience would like the most? Oh, man. It was crazy because you felt like sometimes the audience wanted that theme of the week. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to try to play to that theme as much as possible. But at the end of the day, it was like, how do I take this song and make it my own? And it, it's like one of those things where it either it was a hit or miss. You either made it your own and they hated it mm -hmm. yeah. because it didn't sound like the original and it took away from their, I guess, their feeling they get from the song, you know, or your rendition, you know, did really good. So. so speaking of making it your own, you're going to do two songs for us, yes. one of which is a cover? Yes, yes. All right, we're going to get to hear that. Yeah. But first, um, where can people see you, find you, like, in the next six months? People can find me. Um, we're finishing up this radio tour right now. Of course, they can find me on my social networks. Um, my Twitter is at I'm Chris Rich. Instagram's at I'm Chris Rich. And my music page is chrisrichardsonmusic.com. It has the Joy and Pain video on it. Um, it has an EP video that I did called In the Name of Love. Um, I think Far Away is up there. And, of course, it keeps the news running as to what's next uh, that's going on with me. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see what you do live. Thank Get you. Into Let's it. check it out. Right. You know my head is separate And it feels like I am just too close to love you There's nothing I can really say I can't lie no more I can't hide no more Gotta be true to myself and it feels like I am just too close to love you. Said I'll be on my way. Hey, yeah, just want to say hey. Don't mean to be rude, no. Don't mean to think about you night long if it's by if it's the last line yeah take the good times with the sorrow promise we'll be back tomorrow can you smile for me show those pretty teeth blow my mind again if you miss me Joy and plans. Let's talk about us. Oh, yeah. Cause even if we fuss or fight, though, mama, I can't get enough. Tell me where you are and where you've been. Oh, all I want is you to tell me a happy again. Can you smile for me? Show those pretty teeth. If you miss me, you can't cry away. Touch my heart again. Let me feel you, baby. Even if it's 
somewhere in between joy and even if it's somewhere I swear we'll get there the tears are gone now I can see you smile again somewhere between pain and joy girl there's everything the best smile I've ever seen on you can you smile Chris Thank Richardson, you, yes. you guys you. make Thank some noise. Thank you guys so much. Great job. Yes. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming through. I just, I Definitely. seriously love so much your story about how, how many different things happen, how many different shots you took. There's so many people that if somebody tells them no one, two, three times, they'll be like, I guess it didn't work out. Yeah. But here yeah, you are. Yeah. Like, maybe I should try something else. Yeah. You know? Like, oh, no. was there ever anybody, like, kicking you in the pants, say, keep going? Or, like, yeah, where definitely. does that come from? My to, family, like... definitely. <laughs> um, my family's just there believing in what it is that I believe in. So they just, uh, if it's something that I love, they sort of always sort of been there to, to say that they love it, too. So that definitely helps. It's awesome. But at the same time, I just have that drive. I have certain, like, goals and aspirations in my own personal life to reach my own, I guess, certain points of happiness that, uh, that uh, I feel like I'm finally getting a chance to, you know, get to these certain goals and uh i think myself too you know working really hard and staying persistent is definitely one of those things that got me ahead especially yeah. you know and even down to cash money if i wasn't you know if i didn't stay persistent yeah. i wouldn't have met who i needed to meet you know vice versa the story sort of blends itself together if you well, you're making it happen i'm trying man i'm trying thank you for sitting Thanks in with us again me. this is the new music show online aka the weekend mixtape i'm dj ski I'm Julie Pilot. next week uh time flies is halloween coming in yes on halloween are you gonna dress up i might have to now Okay. I was thinking about well, it. I'm invited. You you are, if you want to come invited. back, you're more than welcome. Sounds good. Sounds good. Absolutely. Bring some water from Virginia Anything Beach. Anything you want to <laughs> say to you? Uh, anything you want to say to your fans before we bounce? Just thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody out there, for coming to the show today. I definitely really appreciate it. And check yes. out Joy and Pain. It's on iTunes and my music page, chrisrichardsonmusic.com. Definitely. We're out All right, of here. Have a good week.